Welcome back to the aquaponic greenhouse build. We are finally getting into building the aquaponic system. It's been a while since I've released a video to the public. My last video is actually posted on our Patreon page and it's about a half an hour long and goes into the nitty gritty details of this whole design. So you may want to head over to there if you have a bunch of questions on how this is set up and join into our Patreon page. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks for your support. The majority of the frame is based off of the design of how we build our Raftmaster frames that we sell to the public. Um, they have connectors like these that are flattened out at some spots but um, since I don't have to ship these all over the US I'm making full length uh, parts uh, saves a lot of time with having to crimp those and also I'm using these little connectors tubing connectors to insert and create some of the T connections again it uh, helps to save some of the labor time of putting this together and instead of using uh, different uh, prefab tees and whatnot that can cost four or five dollars a piece uh, between a bolt and one of these it's about seventy cents uh, for each intersection so there's a substantial savings by uh, using these types of connectors these are very easy to insert I like to just put the bolt on it put it in and then you just need a little bit of a tap to get in. I use the bolts really to keep it straight so they don't skew in there. And once that's in there, it's never going to come out. Then to put it together, you run the bolt through your pre-drilled hole in the conduit. Screw that in. And then just tighten it up. And it makes a really nice, strong intersection. Putting this end section together is basically the trickiest part of the entire bed. It's got a couple supports that head off to the end to support that. And then uh, once I get this in, the rest of it goes together very fast. I like using the electrical conduit because it's cheap, it doesn't rust and it's relatively easy to work with if you of course have the right tools I have a nice conduit bender and a, an electric um, hacksaw for cutting it down so it uh, goes together pretty quickly Oops. I also can cut and drill all this conduit in my shop makes for a really good rainy day project and have it all ready to go together. And the weather is much nicer outside. Once the end is done, long stretch goes together really fast and once the liner is in here it's going to come up and over this so it's going to even hide the screws some people might think they're a little unsightly but when this is all done you're never going to see them underneath that liner and once it's together this thing becomes amazingly strong it's just three quarter inch conduit but it has no problem holding my weight And I've had other beds in place for a couple years now at the dome greenhouse and they've held up without any problems at all. One thing I forgot to mention is I wanted to put some weed barrier down between the grow bed and the wall of the greenhouse. And so I just bought a roll and cut it in half. A nice quick tip for you is to cut this, use a serrated bread knife and it goes right through it. Just don't tell your significant other about it.
connecting the two sections of the top railing is pretty easy too. You can just use these same inserts. Pound them in a little bit. And then you can just use these little sections of threaded rod. Twist the two sections together. Between each rib of the bed I want to put one inch piece of styrofoam board in between it. That's to help even out the bottom a little bit and also to insulate the water against the ground since the cold is just going to permeate into the ground it will help to keep the mass of that water a little bit warmer over the winter. Since all the foam board is 24 inches wide and I need 23 inches in between each of these ribs. I made this really high quality table saw with my circular saw. Basically just bolted it to a piece of chipboard, made a fence for it, and I'm going to cut everything with that. Now that the electrician has finished the conduit work for the controllers for the fans, I can sweep off the stones that have made their way onto the foam and start installing the um, liner into this bed. Today I'm going to spend a little time installing the liner in this first deep water culture bed. Uh, it's about 85 degrees outside and with the sun hitting the greenhouse and no power yet for the fans, um, it's pushing about 120, 125 degrees inside here. The reason why I'm doing it while it's so warm is I was hoping it would soften up the plastic a little bit and make it easier to uh, fold around some of the edges and whatnot. So we're going to try to sweat it out in here and see how well this goes down.
originally I was just planning for the bulkhead fitting to come right to the side and just sort of hang on to the liner um, but now that I'm looking at it a little more closely I'm going to add a, a board in between the frame to help support this just as a little safety. I think it would hold on its own. I have a, another raft that I did that and it seemed to be fine but that was with a two inch fitting. This is a three inch and it's going to have a bunch of valves and other things on it so that's a lot of force to put on it. I think that board will make a big difference. Alright so here's my board I made up. This uh, particle board is actually very water resistant. They use it for floorings and houses and when we built our house we had standing water on it for a long time. You even found a few pieces out in the woods that uh, we're still there after five or six years and they're still in great shape so I'm going to use this in a few areas of the the aquaponics setup. And we'll give it a quick coat of paint just to make it look pretty. And of course the scariest part of any project is cutting a hole through a perfectly good liner or tank. I'm doing it from this side. If I do happen to slip with the blade, the worst that will happen is that it will just hit against my hole as the template. If I did it from the other side, I run the risk of dropping the blade or slipping and cutting just too far, so this is a, a good safety precaution to take. It's always good to make sure there's no debris underneath where the gasket's going to go. Get that on there nicely. Slide it in. And make sure there's no wrinkles under the liner. A lot of bulkhead fittings will come with a nice big plastic washer. Put that on. And then spin the nut on. The plastic washer helps it to spin better so it doesn't grab against the wood or whatever the wall material is. Most bulkhead fittings you can really just tighten them by hand and that's enough for that gasket to compress on the other side and keep it from leaking. Now I like to use threaded fittings instead of the slip fittings on the bulkheads because if you make a mistake or want to redo some plumbing you can dismantle it without disturbing the bulkhead and I use this Teflon paste on the fittings. You can see I already have it on here because I've already screwed this in and forgot to record it. So usually you just brush some on. And a lot of people will think that the Teflon is used for a sealant. It's really used as a lubricant between the two fittings. So you can crank these in a little bit tighter otherwise you get way too much friction between them and that's where the leaking comes from. These fittings are slightly tapered so the each other and with these big ones you can usually get enough leverage to tighten them in by hand plus I don't have a wrench big enough to get around this I have all the plumbing designed so I know what goes where I'm not gonna go over that in this video I'm gonna do a, another video dedicated just to how the whole system is gonna operate but Basically, it's just standard PVC fittings connecting everything together. Although not required, I do have this purple primer. A lot of people think uh, you don't need to use it. Well, you really don't. Purple is usually used for real commercial installations, for residential and businesses, 
So when the building official comes to check the plumber's work, you can tell that everything's been primed with the purple primer and it's been done right. A lot of contractors don't uh, prime things properly, so it allows them to inspect to make sure there's 100% uh, coverage with the glues and everything. I just happen to have some of the purple here, so that's what I'm using, but I also have a jar of uh, clear that I'll use later on, just so it's not obnoxious looking in some spots. I'm going to start filling the bed before the rest of the system is built. Reason being is the water in our well can only refill at about a gallon and a half a minute. So I'm going to fill this up slowly at about half a gallon a minute. I'll slow this down and then uh, it'll fill up over the next week or so. I'm also going to fill the bed with my rafts before even cutting them out. It's going to take a week or so to fill this up. So I just want to protect the water from the sun a little bit so it's, I don't have to deal with algae blooms as soon as I start up the system. It did take a little over a week to get this bed filled up and you can see as the rafts go along the rail here everything looks nice and level so overall really happy with getting the floor leveled out and this frame in place. So that's about it for now for the deep water culture bed. Up next will be the tank installation and some of the plumbing. And don't forget about the video that we have posted on our Patreon page that goes over the entire design in detail. Thanks!